Good morning, you guys. Sorry about that. I'm having an earthquake. <laughs> Actually, it's Lego attacks. Um, I wanted to do something on how to identify a false gospel versus a true one. Now, the real guy, somebody yesterday sent me, oh, the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15 that Paul gave was only part of the gospel. Oh, uh, really? The one he said saved us? He said, I come to you knowing nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He spoke against any human merit at all being added. Then he tells you that the gospel is not of man. It's not according to man's mind. It's not going to make sense. It's spiritually discerned. If man is going to create some kind of way to heaven, it's always going to include something he's doing. Do you understand? And as long as, I don't care who's preaching it, okay? Paul even said if an angel from heaven preached it, let him be anathema of God, cursed, damned to hell. That's how strongly I feel about it. And I do this because, uh, oh, and by the way, the messages I'm getting about people saying, you don't have the Holy Spirit. You're not Christ-like. You're very, like, angry and very, you know what? I hate every false way. And if you want to keep fuzzy bunny, it's not me. Because I'm going to stand and contend for the gospel that saves souls and changes lives. And it's only the revelation of God's unconditional love, his blood shed on the cross, what he did, that you mock as easy believism and cheap grace. Let me remind you, it's not cheap. It's free. Because if it was cheap, it means it cost you something. It didn't cost you anything, but it cost God his son. And you trample his precious blood underfoot. And you call it an unclean thing, like those in Hebrews who tried to add the law. So I'm going to read to you the book of Galatians here. How it, 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 you, all right, first of all, let me, let me just say this to you. People add stuff to what Christ did because it makes sense to man, right? But I call that cheap law. Because it says, cursed is everyone who does not do all things written in the book of the law. And James tells you if you offend in one, you offend in all. That's from birth till death, people. Well, I can't do that. Exactly. That's why you need to come back to grace. God's unearned, unmerited. See, God saves you because of his character. Not because you merit it. It's because of how good he is, not because of how good you are. And that's the difference between religion and the true faith. And I, I, I am so fearful and heartbroken that the billion claiming Christendom aren't even saved. How small is that tiny percentage that is resting, because we I believe have entered into rest. We have ceased from our labors as far as salvation is concerned, knowing that Christ saved us because he's the Savior. Imagine that. He saved us. Wow. What a concept. Just believe God and it's counted to you for righteousness. He wore our sin. We get to wear his righteousness. Tells you everything. Even in the parable of the wedding, he gives you the robe for the wedding garment. He gives it to you. It's his righteousness. That you're wearing, not your own, because yours is this filthy rags. I, I don't know what people can't get about this. Okay, so I'm going to, I'll read you stuff in Galatians. And then I have, you know what, I might just go ahead and show you this. Let, let me give you this goofy little visual thing here. Here's a real gospel, okay? Let, let's get familiar with the real so we can recognize the counterfeit. Real gospel. God's grace, all about Jesus. And his work. That's it. I come to you knowing nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's salvation right there. That's what you put your trust in. In whom we trusted. After that you heard the gospel of your salvation. You believed. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Until the day of redemption. And the rapture is just the redemption of our bodies. Our spirits have already been saved. We've been born of God because we trusted in the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God in the flesh. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, it's the gospel that saved us, not part of a gospel. Stop taking repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Are you a Jew in the first century being offered the kingdom with Jesus as king ruling in Jerusalem? No, then shut up. It has nothing to do with you. They rejected. He was the, the uh, stone, the builders rejected. Okay? That has nothing to do with the gospel of grace. It was the gospel of the kingdom. The good news that the kingdom was at hand. And if Israel had received him as king, 
they could have had that kingdom. But they don't, because they rejected it. So he said, go out. Because he said, don't, when he sent the disciples out, he said, don't go to the Gentiles. Go only but to the lost sheep of Israel. Okay? Because this promise was to them first to set up the kingdom. All right? Well, they rejected that. And it's been postponed. And he says, then, after he died, was buried and rose again, he tells them, preach the gospel to every creature. And then Paul calls that, the gospel of God's grace, the gospel of Christ. It's a whole different good news message. All right. I'm not telling you there's two gospels that saved you. No, 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 no. What he was preaching in the four gospels was the kingdom being offered. That's what John the Baptist was making the way for him to be received as Messiah, as the prophesied king to the people of Israel. Okay, so when you don't rightly divide the word of truth, you get confusion. All right, so let's go here. Uh, this is the real gospel, okay? Now, I don't care who's preaching it to you, but if anything's added to this, and I'm going to read this to you in Galatians, let's just look at one. It's false. What's this? Oh, it's pointing to you and your, let's see, commitment. Okay, well, if you want to add your commitment, it needs to be 100% all the time, every day. Well, I can't do that. Exactly. Come back to that. God's grace. All right? Get it. This is a false, accursed message. All right? What else? Oh, you again. Point to you and your obedience. Cheap law. Cursed is everyone who doesn't continue in all things. Written in the book of the law. To do them. For Christ is the end of all for righteousness for all those who believe. All right, here we go. This, Jesus plus, because they always, they'll throw Jesus in. They might even throw in his death, burial, and resurrection. But they're going to add some false gospel. Why? Because it's not pointing to Christ and him crucified alone. What's another one? Oh, you uh, repenting of sins, stopping bad works or sin. Here you go. False. Jesus plus anything is nothing. Jesus plus nothing is everything. You get that? Let's look at some more. This is false. Point to you and your religious work. Sacraments. You gotta do this. You gotta get baptized. You gotta. Water baptism is a symbol of a spiritual truth that you were buried, you died with Christ, you were buried and rose again. That's what immersion, coming up out of the water. That's what that means. Okay, it doesn't mean. If that saved you, water doesn't wash away your sin. The blood of Christ does. You understand? Thief on the cross wasn't baptized. Neither were any of the Old Testament saints, but they were saved. All right, this? False. Why? Part of it is pointing to you. And let's be honest. If any of it is pointing to you, that's all you're going to hear. You're not going to hear nothing about what Jesus did on the cross. You're going to hear, blah, 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 blah. I got to stop my sins. That's what you're going to hear. And that's what you're going to think saved you. And it didn't. You need to get saved first. Sealed by the Holy Spirit promise. Let the Spirit of God come in you and let Him lead you into changing these things. Alright? you got to let Him do it. Otherwise, it's dead work. What's another one? You. Anything you do or stop doing or don't do. Stopping bad works, doing good ones. False. Jesus plus anything. False garbage. All this trash. You see it? Can't save you. This is what's real. This is the real gospel right here. And I'm going to read this to you in Galatians. I don't know how to get through to people any clearer. Because they hate God's grace. But they need it so bad. And when they're really pointed down. So wait a minute. You stop sinning? Well, I mistake. No, 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 no. Don't belittle sin. It's a sin. And it's enough to send you right to hell. Because God's standard is perfection. And you only get that when he imputes his righteousness on you because of what his son did. You see, his son was perfect. His son fulfilled the law. His son was obedient. His son had commitment even to the death of the cross. Do you understand? It's what he did, not what you do. Stop looking to yourself. It's so self-righteous and it makes me sick. All right, yeah, and no, I'm not a cute fuzzy bunny. I'm not going to be real sweet about it because I hate every false way. And I'll continue to speak against it. Here's Paul in Galatians. Chapter 1. And by the way, Paul wasn't real sweet either. He said, oh, foolish Galatians. Who's bewitched you? Can he get clearer than that? He was not pleasant about it. 
Jesus called him, oh, brood of vipers, whitewashed tombs full of dead man's bones. Outside you look good, but inside you're full of everything unclean. He wasn't real pleasant either, was he? And it wasn't anything he did wrong. He was right in saying it. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. It can't save you. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. They're bringing the law in, Judaizers. They were coming in and saying, it's Jesus plus something you're doing or not doing. Do you understand? It's an accursed gospel message. But though we are an angel from heaven, like Moroni of the Mormons, I don't know why, I, every time I ask them, if you believe the Bible is true, then why don't you heed Paul's warning that an angel from heaven might preach you another gospel and receive it? You can't ever answer that. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. What is that gospel? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, the one the guy just said isn't the full gospel. Really, where's the rest of it? Is God the author of confusion? No. He's not. They're, they're, look, it's very clear. You're either believing on Christ as Savior, you're trusting Him, and you're saved, or you're not. It's that simple. There's no believers that don't quite live up to it and aren't living good enough and dedicated and really real about their faith. Okay, well, where's that line? What if I pray like one prayer less than that? What if I am committed, but I miss it by this much? Where's the line? There isn't one. You don't live up to anything because you can't. You need to mouth stop by the law. You need to become guilty before God. Fall on your face. I got nothing. Nothing. I am having to trust in you because I even think evil. That's how messed up my flesh is. So I, I don't know why they just can't get it. So I'm just going to keep giving it to you because I want people saved. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you ever received, let him be accursed, anathema of God, condemned to hell. That's some serious language right there. And I hate every false way. That's why you're not seeing me be like, well, I'm not timid and I won't be because I'm going to proclaim the truth with boldness. Because I love him. I love Jesus. I love what he did for me. And I will stand on it till the day I die. Praise God. I pray he gives me the strength to do that. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. He said, if I, preach if I preached uh, circumcision, the offense of the cross would cease. If I would just preach one thing added to what Jesus did where men could glory in it, the offense of the cross would cease. But see, men hate God's grace because they can't glory in themselves. They can't say, I'm saved, see, because of my commitment and my I don't care who preaches it to you. I just don't care. And they preach lies in hypocrisy. They'll tell you, you got to sell everything, give it to the poor, and pick up your cross and follow God. But they get $100,000 speaking engagements and $5 million houses in Armani suits. Get out of town with that. It's just ridiculous. All right. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end there are the ways of death. What seems right to man? We got to do something. We can't just rest in God's goodness and what he provided, his perfect redemptive work on the cross. Oh, no, no. You can't, as Ray Comfort said, you can't just think you're safe just because Jesus died. He was marred. Worse than any man. What he endured, he humbled himself. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word became flesh. And dwelt among us. He humbled himself to death on the cross. The most humiliating, torturous death there was. And you're telling me his precious blood wasn't enough? Your living in holiness is helping you get saved. It makes me vomit. It's so satanic. And I don't understand why men can't see how sick it is to take the glory from what God did for you. His provision of salvation. The free gift of eternal. It's not a contradiction, people. It's not a free gift, but... like, Because God's so confusing, he likes to confuse stuff. No, he's black and white. 
You're saved, you're unsaved. You believe, you trust on Christ, or you don't. And if you believe in Jesus plus something, you don't believe the gospel. And therefore, are not sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, and therefore are lost. That's why I'm up here screaming. All right, you get it? Because I don't want anybody lost at all. And he says, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. But by the revelation of Jesus Christ telling you this gospel, I just gave you the one that you said wasn't the full gospel that Paul said saved us. Who are you to tell me the gospel he just said saved us isn't the real gospel? It's not all of it. Really? God's that confusing. Huh? He's hiding his plan of salvation that much. No. He said, we must be born again. As Moses lifted up the bronze serpent, so must I be lifted up. And I will draw them in unto me. Moses lifted up the bronze serpent, the serpent wrapped around like a cross. That represented the sin Christ would become for us on the cross. They looked upon it, and they were healed of the death from the serpent bites. We look upon the cross with faith. Jesus wearing our sin, and we are healed of the second death. The Passover lamb is a shadow of Christ's blood. Okay? The people inside the house, were they saved because they were doing such good stuff in the house? Because they were living right? No. Because the blood of the lamb was on the outside of the door. And so death passed over them. That's what Passover is. He saw the blood and didn't see anything going on inside. Do you understand? Because the blood covers sin. Not just covers it, purges it. Animal blood covered it until they had to do it again the next year. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, purged our sins. It tells you that. Jesus, by himself, purged our sins and sat down of the right hand of majesty on high. Why did he sit down? Because it was finished. Did when Jesus died, did he say, my part's finished? No. He said, to Talisai, it is finished. It's done. Salvation's a done deal. You just either receive it or you don't. So you can believe in Jesus plus something. And most people really do trust that it's something they're doing. I guarantee it. I've told you that before. And it said, But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, because he tells you right here that he and profited, and I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. He was killing people. He was the present at Stephen's uh, Stony. And profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen, and immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. It's not of man. It's not religion. It's not what you're doing. It's not what you didn't do. Do you understand? It's not what you stop doing bad, what you start doing, doing good. It's all what Jesus did. If any of that false gospel points to anything you do or don't do, it's a lie. Let them be accursed. I don't care who's telling. I don't care how sincere. They're sincerely wrong. I don't care how many degrees they have. It doesn't matter. I don't care if it's an angel telling you it's another gospel so I'm hoping that you rest in this I, I don't know how to get clear to people all I do is come out here and contend for it I didn't ask you to like me I didn't say I was a role model I didn't say I was anything because this is not about Renee this is not about me this is not about you this is about Christ and him crucified and we need to keep that in mind all right God bless <laughs>